had an opportunity to get uh, through the tape and evaluate the game, uh, evaluate it with the players. Uh, you know, there were obviously a lot of things that we need to fix. There were some really good things. Uh, there were some things to build on on offense, you know, some explosive plays, uh, some schemes that we got a chance to, to <clears throat> run in game. I thought that was good. Uh, I thought on defense at times we played, uh, we played really well. Just, you know, the big plays really plagued us, obviously. Um, and some things that, uh, that we have to fix, including some tackling. We'll, we'll work hard on that this week. And, <clears throat> Uh, from a special team standpoint, it was a little hot and cold. Did a great job in, in kick return. Did a great job in punt. We blocked the field goal an extra point. But obviously, we gave up a kick return for a touchdown. Uh, we had an opportunity to tackle him on the six yard line instead. It ended up a 101 yard return. So uh, we have to get a lot better in all three phases. Uh, but, you know, I think that the kids are pretty optimistic and you know, look forward to uh, having the opportunity to, to get back to work tomorrow. I guess it's been a lot of fans asked you mentioned it. Any update with Raheem and what his situation is? You said you might address it after the game. Yeah, we'll have it all resolved by the time we hit the field tomorrow. You know, uh, and you know, once it is resolved, I'll be glad to discuss it. I just, you know, uh, still kind of working through all the information and things like that. And you know, uh, obviously, uh, you know, the, the most important thing for me is you know what doing what's best for the team and what's best for the you know hundred plus guys that we have out there every day. Same type of plan for Art too. I mean, going forward, is he still emergency or? Yeah, as of right now, yes. And uh, McLean Carter, any updates on him? I, I, I don't anticipate McLean playing again. Okay. Um, this year. Okay. This year? I, yeah, to the best of my knowledge, he, he probably will not play again this year. Just with Art, I mean, do you need, at some point, do you need some sort of clarity just so it's not hanging over, you know? Yeah, yeah. We, we, you know, we'll, uh, we'll obviously discuss uh, all those things. I mean, Art is practicing. He's, you know, working through the game plan and all those things. and. You know, uh, you know. I guess it's a brave new world. You know, I mean, I, those are both situations that I did not uh, ever anticipate ever coming across in, in my life in football. So um, I, I will, you know, we'll do our best to handle it the right way of what's best for the players, but also what's best for the team because that that is the priority. And, and you don't in, uh, anticipate any other players uh, making that decision or you know going forward. I, I do not. You know, I mean, I. There aren't that many guys left that haven't, that are either haven't already redshirted or have or didn't plan to redshirt already. So yeah. you know it's really not a, a large pool. Um, you know we have a couple guys that were sophomores and juniors that already had planned to redshirt and we're kind of staying on that that plan and we'll use those their four games you know over the course of time you know and then you know if their role changes those guys are all willing to play. Like if they get into the too deep, then you know they're all willing to play. Okay, we've um, made a lot to do with uh, Rutgers being on its 10th offensive coordinator in 10 years. And players who I've talked to in the past have talked about the different terminology, the different play, and saying that's a big reason why the, uh, the, the offense has struggled over the last couple of years. You're trying to do it on the fly. How difficult is it to do one? And do you have to be sensitive to the fact that you know there have been a lot of different changes with the offense and kind of have to slow roll a little bit? Yeah, very, very much so. You know, I mean, I, I think that you know, if you go through the tape, uh, from my perspective, we left a lot of plays out there just because, you know, we probably aren't really ready to execute all the things, at, you know, at the level that you would hope. But uh, we're just going to create some consistency to keep it that way. We have used everything as stayed in the same terminology, uh, and I think that is helpful. Uh, you know, I've always been big on, you know, concept-based teaching. So, you know, we're using a lot of similar terminology with some slight tags that allow them to, you know, to use the same teaching that we've used going back from the spring and, and in some ways, you know, for the last two years. Coach, um, I just want to clarify about the plane. So when you say he's not expected to play again this year, is that medically, is that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is that effectively, he's done, that's it? Does he have to the best of my knowledge. To come I mean, back a, he can't come back like another year, right? He's, 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 I, I don't believe he has another year to play. Okay, so he's, so he's effectively done. Yes. Okay, thank you. While at Peniston, any update on him? Um, he, he's actually right now uh, exploring surgery opportunity uh, uh, possibility, so uh, unlikely that he'll play. Now he he theoretically possibly could have a sixth year, depending upon how his you know he could go he could uh, apply for it anyway. And obviously, you know, Johnny runs a lot. He's a pretty rugged runner. And he cut his hand the other day. Have you guys thought about obviously Cole lost the game for one play? Thought about Albert Ricci potentially going forward in those situations? 
just a snap or? Uh, yeah, that could be a possibility as well. You know, and, and we will probably create some wildcat stuff too, just if we, you know, get in a situation where, you know, you don't want to burn a play, but at the same time you, uh, you know, like, I mean, I, Isaiah was a high school quarterback, yeah. you know, he's a pretty talented runner. So. Um, just with Cole, he, he had said during the, you know, during preseason that he'd be ready for anything, but obviously the plan going in was to not have him play and hopefully redshirt. Yeah. Um, does his demeanor change now that he, he's really kind of one snap away from being the guy? Yeah, I think he does. I mean, I think that, uh, you know, his sense of urgency to, to, to learn it all and grasp it all uh, definitely increases and, you know, his reps in practice will definitely change. And, you know, I think it's a great opportunity for him to learn and develop, you know, because he, he's getting, you know, he'll go from getting strictly scout team reps right now to pretty much getting, you know, some real reps in practice. And, you know, I, I think it will accelerate his development, hopefully. I guess what have you seen out of Philton, Indiana? It seems like they're kind of a you know, middle of the pack defense. And do you think that maybe helps you guys? That how big of a, I guess, jump do you think you can make this past week to a full week? Uh, well, you know, I mean, I, I honestly think they're, you know, they're a pretty good football team, uh, you know, and we have not exactly, you know, we've yeah. not exactly like we've been going, flying up and down the field. So, uh, but I do think that, you know, just being the second week of, you know, similar schemes, uh, just basically kind of finding different ways to do the same things and get our guys some repetitive teaching, I think that will help us a lot. You know, I, I've always thought that, you know, the, the biggest jump as a football team is usually from that first to second week just because of adjusting to the speed of the game. So in some of the things that we did that were new, those things hopefully, we, you know, we'll be much better at uh, this week. Um, a little big picture regarding you. Um, when going from high school to college, a lot of people made, made a big deal about that. And I know you're two, two years removed from from high school, but did you study guys like Gus Malzahn maybe, Chad Morris, um, even Kevin Sumlin, guys who made that leap from college, from high school to college, one, and do you, considering you, you were at a high school program that basically, as Pat Hobbs said, it was like a one uh, AAA basically. Do you think it's that as big of a transition as, as other people make out to be? You know, I, when I say football is football, I think people are like, oh, yeah, okay. But um, one, when you coach at the schools that I coached at, your access to college programs is probably way greater than any college coach has because, you know, you have good players and, you know, they want to grant you access. So, you know, the opportunity to learn and study football is really, you know, tremendous if you're coaching a really good high school football program. Um, you know, one of the other things is I, I have legitimately called – you know, 200 games in my career. Most guys that step in the first time, they're a coordinator. They've never called a play before in their life. They've never stood up here and, you know, talked in front of a camera. You know, my, my team's played on national television. We dealt with, you know, a huge media, that, you know, every week. So those types of things, to me, I have not been overwhelming. You know, the, you know, trying to get our team to be good enough to win a football game on Saturday, I mean, that's a big task, you know, and, and uh, you know, I think we have a ways to go, but I think our kids are pretty bought into it. So as far as like the workload and the volume, uh, you know, some, the things that are probably the hardest are trying to translate the way I see it into the language that we're currently using. I think, you know, on game day, when you want to have the play called, you know, in five seconds, uh, we're not really built that way right now. So. Um, it, that was probably the toughest thing for me on Saturday was to, you know, to go to a call sheet and, you know, go down and get something called to a wristband that now they have to relate that way rather than get on the ball and play. Um, you know, I'd called it a certain way for 20 years. So that, that's definitely a transition. But, you know, the rest of it, I don't know, it seemed like, seemed like a football game to me. I know, I know you have a pretty big Rolodex to go through, but did you lean on anyone for advice uh, last week or you just kind of had to do it, figure it out on your own? Honestly, I was so busy that I didn't really get an opportunity to catch up with a whole lot of people. But, um, you know, as I said, you know, I think I said this last week at one point, like, you know, obviously my brother Anthony is somebody that I, you know, I talk to a lot and, you know, he, he's made, you know, a similar transition. So, uh, you know, he coached high school football for a long time. So uh, he definitely is, you know, he's very helpful always. It looks like Davon has moved back to the tight end room. Yes. Was that, well, after you took over, or was that prior to you taking over? Um, I guess what was the rationale? I guess we were flirting with it a little bit. And then, uh, you know, when I took over, we just had a conversation with him. Coach Herbs met with him and said, look, you know, we think that this is really where your future is and also that we could have a great role, role for you. Some of the things that we would hope to get to uh, would require, you know, uh, just having more tight ends available to us that are ready to play. And I think his skill set, you know, fits some things that we're able to do. And, you know, he's a unique player because he, he can play wide receiver and he can play, uh, you know, in line and off the ball. So I, I think that he gives us a lot of options. 
we made a big deal about the quarterback depth, but I mean a running back depth without Raheem, just from uh, that that standpoint, I know Isaiah is probably going to get a little bit more, but then Aaron Young, just your confidence in the, in the running back room. I think it's a great room. I think it's the best, most deepest room on our offense. So uh, I think we've got, you know, even if Raheem doesn't play, I think we still have four really, you know, valuable Big Ten running backs. I know a couple of those guys are young, but they are good players. And uh, you know, Aaron is a is a unique kid because he's very intelligent and he's very versatile. He's a dynamic kid, and then you know, I think Kron uh, in the backfield can really do some really good things. So you know, hopefully his role will increase. Yeah, I was going to ask about Kron because I think he was you know early on. I think only one one or two games early on. I, I guess you envision him not redshirting at this point. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that it's ever been the plan to redshirt him. So okay. it's it you know. Uh, I think it's always been the plan to evaluate it as we go. Uh, you know, he's always given the indication that he wants to play, and you know, physically, he's pretty ready. You know, so it's really just a matter of you know not, you know, overloading him with too much stuff. Well, final question. Thanks, Coach. Okay. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thanks, 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 Appreciate it.